Hits and Crits. What is up, YouTube? Welcome to this very first faction overview of the season five exchanges. So the patch is upon us for a few days now, and uh, we all took our um, first uh, little steps into this new meta or into this new season. Um, if you want to check like our honest reactions or like general uh, impressions of the patch of, of season five, you can you can check uh, up. Up there on the screen, you can see this video where we cover all the factions and have our little community live event last Wednesday. So today, Daniel is with me again. Welcome, Larix, to the to the to the Stark video. Glad to be here. Yeah. So we, I guess, we jump right in uh, to um, cover where the Starks came from. So in season four, the Starks were a viable faction. We would say, um, surely the Tully Calf were a little dominant, um, but it, overall it was a well-designed faction, uh, which was seen also in like competitive play, bigger tournament play. It won tournaments also, and it, and it's also a fun faction to play on like a kitchen table. So, Daniel, what do you think? Where do, where do we come from? Where where were the Starks in S four? Yeah, I mean, there are different aspects to cover, right? And, and you, you covered already some. Um, it was a great faction in general. It was um, a faction you could definitely win uh, your casual games as well as bigger tournaments um, with more rounds. It was uh, um, nearly all the time weighted positively, or I mean, at least most of the time, I guess, weighted positively during um, the patch. It um, is a fun faction to play mm. or it can be a fun faction to play i mean, I mean it depends on um on your preferences but they have mobile units they have aggressive units um they have, have a lot of things that are fun to play with right you are if you're playing starks you basically um are in the driver's seat and have like the initiative right and that's um that made them very attractive i played them um with a lot of fun uh, also i guess with some success and they had um I mean, they had dominant commanders, right? We saw yeah. Rob, we saw Great John all the time, um, but we also saw Roderick, and um, so they they were not like completely locked into one commander, for example. Yeah. But they had, yeah, um, there are other commanders that you didn't um, see that often, and I think there's a little bit you can say more about them because um, they were strong. Mm -hmm. But their their strength basically came from their units. They have powerful NCUs, probably the, the most powerful NCUs in the game, with Aya, for example, which is incredibly strong. They had the Tully Knights. Um, they had like really overperforming units. Also, the Quenapon Trackers come to mind. Um, but their tactic stack um, is a little bit in comparison to other tactic stacks um, under or below the curve. Yeah, true. But what I like, like assault orders to have in the base deck is quite good. And uh, what I also, what I feel a lot of times, what people, uh, or that that people think the Stark deck is quite a good deck is uh, because of um, what's the name? Um, uh, Winter is coming, which which basically shuts down orders and tactics cards right this is also a good card to have in the deck but i totally feel you like in general it's it's uh it's pretty one-sided right the whole base deck is is, is yeah. basically yeah aiming for charges and attacks so it's a little bit hard to or, or easier to calculate with this deck compared to free folk for example compared to martell's a little bit even but yeah, yeah. So that's that's what we see. I think you're right. It's it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, but like, it's straightforward. Like to be honest, we don't. I mean, we don't have to dive like too deep into this. But Winter's Might and Northern Ferocity, like, ah, uh, they are not good cards. And even, even yeah. Devastating Impact and Winter is coming. They might as well be one card. And they 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 spent like four cards for in total effects that are. I mean, not bad, but nope. they are not game breaking and winning you games. Probably, maybe Winter's coming can. Yeah, that's the only. Effect. Yeah, seen isolated, but I also see that the Starks are the only faction that can stack those, right, on top of each other. So uh, pr probably also good. But yeah. yeah, that's where we come from. So now we've seen some changes on units, 
but also on mm-hmm. tactics cards, right? So let's start with these. Um, there were also some general changes, and the most dominant ones, or the most, you know, the the the, the yeah, the, the the big ones were hidden traps and the lance calf. So um, for the Starks, that means we have a change on mirror read. We have a change on the Krennicman trackers, and obviously, we have the House Tully Cavaliers changed. So um, I think we can say um, hidden traps will be discussed in more detail when we cover free folk uh, soon, like in a few days or some. It, it, it will be up soon. Uh, but for the Starks, so hidden traps, what, what are your feelings um, yeah. on the hidden traps change for House Stark? As you said, like the reason for covering this more in detail in the free folk video is that they rely most on this uh, ability, right? Yeah. Hidden traps were for um, like probably all competitive lists, the the, the pillar um, of their of the list building. Yeah. This is not equally true for most other factions, and it's definitely not true for Starks. They used Cranogman trackers in the competitive list. You saw them. You maybe saw them even twice, but. Um, there, this wasn't only for hidden traps. It's because they also bring marked target. And for yeah. example, in the great John list, um, it's very important to have this guaranteed vulnerable token. If you really um, need to kill this very unit to uh, trigger your overrun or whatever. Yeah. So I think their function is they they are still viable for the function, and there is no good alternative for what they do. So to me, Krenokman trackers. Um, are still good. Still good, and yeah. We will discuss the impact with a little, with some numbers and so on, and, and the free folk video in depth, as we said. But here we can say that the one die is not, um, not the world for what you want with hidden traps. It's basically, yeah, you want to 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 get some chip damage in, and they still do this. Um, it's not that you grind complete units down with hidden traps. Absolutely, traps. absolutely. So, and as we said in this community video, I think this change generally was highly needed for the health of the of the game mm-hmm. and the uh, the main reason were as you said the free folk i think the change probably isn't w- wasn't really needed even for starks night's watch mm-hmm. other factions for, for them it wasn't needed because they couldn't spam it so but like overall as you said it's a good change in general and those units or attachments are still viable options and do what they do or what they should do this yeah. one die is not changing anything for I, I, we think other than free fall, right? And for, from a design perspective, it's all, you could also also always argue that if you nerf abilities that prevent you from doing something because I don't want to get the damage, that's probably a good thing, right? You yes. all want to do something and want to be active, and um, I can I can totally see that. And it's basically, I think the same with um, the bus was change, which was yeah. really yeah. considered an M- MPE like yeah. Um, negative play experience because um, you have all your cool effects and yeah but they don't work this time you know yeah. that's that's not fun so exactly I'm, I'm totally in line with the change okay so on the on the lances um probably same thing and i said it in the community event i think the lance change is is for the game a good change and i didn't see one lance or one unit with lances becoming a unit which you wouldn't take anymore even even the even the Riders of High Garden, which is a unit which is only there for this particular thing to threaten something with ten dice. I mean, Chris, they they got some extra care, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But just j- j- just saying, right? I mean, even even this unit would would be still viable with this change. And um, uh, my 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 second opinion on it or what 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 were in my head or what 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 came to my mind like right after I saw the change was um, you have all these heavy calves and I was instantly thinking about flayed man, right? Because both units cost 8 points. So let's just compare them. And now they move a little bit more together because like it like normally you would you you would have taken probably House Tully Cavaliers because they were just just the better unit. Um, now they probably still are, but now they're moving a little bit closer to each other because the Flademan will definitely bring more damage long term when engaged. For example, they won't do when charging probably, but they will do when engaged. So what what do you think on the lances change specifically for Starks? Yeah, like um, what you say about the general balance, I think it's, it's true and, and it's good that. 
um, that they become better in comparison. I mean, the Flate Man, um, this yeah. is nice. When I saw this, like, they, Simon seems to really go with small incremental changes, changes, which is good because you probably don't do something wrong, but you still have the risk of not doing enough. Yeah. And while one die um, on hidden traps is something, it's maybe 25% or it's a third or it's, you know, even the half uh, of the dice, if you um, consider solo units, like it's one out of 10 dice and that's in charge. So that's not a lot. And yep. one could ask whether it's enough to change this from some considered obnoxious heavy Kev lens meta, the we all know the lovely two Tally Cavaliers with Glory Seeker lists out yep. there, you know? Yep. Yep. And um one could really ask whether this is enough. And this means that yeah, they are still viable. They are yep. definitely still viable. And especially Tally Kev, because um, they are lands calf, but they are also very good, like shock calf, but they're also very good heavy calf. They can tank, they yeah. have the rally banner, and that's all, all still there. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so probably we'll, we'll see, see Tully calf not, not, not way less in the future, probably, but let's, uh, the meta, uh, let, let the community decide on this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we come to changes which are really individually for mm -hmm. the Starks. And one of the um, interesting ones for me, even though it might not be meta-breaking, but it might change a little, is the House Tully Sworn Shields. They gained a movement. They, they, they practiced uh, through the whole winter. Right? You know, the winter came and they, they practiced and practiced and ran a lot. And, and, they have, like and they have five movement now. So there's still six points, but it's uh, a pretty good defensive unit, which can really pack a punch in in the middle. It can just it, it's there to stay through shield wall and the and the three um, armor. Uh, we feel the 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 biggest drawback on them is the six points together with they can't do anything offensively, really. And it does not fuel into the Stark deck, really, um, what we just discussed. So this is like the overall impression. It still puts them on the map a little bit more when building lists. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, they had, they had the right unit here, right? House Tully Shields, um, they, they, they were not seen a lot, and which no. is a shame because House Tully is actually a fan favorite, I guess. And, yeah. and it's such a cool house. and. True. I would really love to build Tully lists, not only with Tully Knights, but also with Tully Shields, awesome, lovely models, and so on and so on. But, yeah, yeah. like, um, and to move a unit from four to five is a big change. Don't get me wrong, but I think they missed the problem with this unit because the problem with this unit is that it's a six point unit, which has a purely defensive role. And, like, yeah. if I want to have a unit to sit on an objective, like I pay five points and not more. If I want to have something, uh, if I, I want, if you want me to pay six points, I need something like a support ability. If we talk about the Berthian Helberts, for example, they are pretty comparable defensive unit, three plus armor, five, uh, five inch move, but they have taunt. And yeah. this can do something even if the unit sits on an objective. And I still don't think the Ber Berthian Helberts are very good to begin with. So like, um, I fe still feel and I'm afraid that they missed something, but it's definitely very positive that they gave them some love and yeah. we should, we should try them. Maybe we, we will, we will find a place for them, but I still feel like also with the four plus to hit, um, it's for me as a competitive player and I'm playing Stark, it's still a hard sell. True. True, especially while you, b because you can still put like stuff that you really want to protect, like recon or others. Yeah. You can still put them in mercs. You can still, right because they have their yeah. value together with Asha. They're quite not not as defensive, but they are offensive, uh, defensive enough, right? To for yeah. for for a specialist. So yeah, as you said, and uh, I think Simon does a good thing in doing those those little changes, moving stuff, moving the needle. I wish for some some more sometimes, but I think it's in general is a good thing as a developer to to push the needle a little bit and see where it gets you, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so that's on the House Tully Sworn Shields, and uh, that brings us to the three 
uh, tactics cards that got changed. So I think we can quickly go over Warcry because um, it, it's basically the same. The only buff we have seen, it used to be only Brynden's unit. Now it's any house Tully calf, uh, not Tully calf, any house Tully unit, uh, which makes the card Pretty just... Pretty much is the same. Yeah. <laughs> it probably comes down to the same, but you know, it it, it, it puts, it puts, um, it puts Warcry, or it, it just makes the card... Um, yeah. A little bit easier to play and more usable, which is in general a good thing, and it and it plays in t exactly into what Warcry is trying to do, right? And well, like, um, once again, yeah. like it's it's a it's a hit, kind of hidden buff. I think we all played the game that we saw cards and <laughs> checked our app. Like, what did yeah yeah yeah. Do? yeah 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 um, yeah true. Um, it's a, it's a very subtle change, and like if you look at the the um, the shields for one second, once again. Mm -hmm. um, why not give them like five plus morale at the same time, right? Because then you will get your war cries off more reliably. Stubborn tenacity is also on panic tests, right? Yeah. And um, maybe these two would have been um, would have been nice. So, uh, Seaman, if you if you hear us, maybe for the next one, they are they are brave knights, you know. Yeah, yeah, so, they, yeah. They can handle yeah. themselves. Yeah. Okay, that's on war cry. I think the mm -hmm. more the way more uh, interesting one. Yeah. And specifically, specifically for for Starks is the Cranok traps. So the Cranok traps got their uh, trigger uh, uh, removed, and they got a way easier one. Now it's just uh, when when an enemy performs a maneuver, march, or retreat before resolving that action. It used to be when this when an enemy unit activates. So it, so it comes off easier. Um, they also removed removed the the condition from the movement. So the movement is there always. Right? It used to be only if it's in long range of a Kranokman unit, so they basically switched it out. So this th so this Kranok Traps always does the minus one to movement, but it only does the the dangerous terrain, the D3 plus one wound, when you are in long range of a Kranokman unit. So now it so now really I, I, I really don't know. So Daniel, what do you think? Is that a buff or is that a nerve? Or is that I, I, I'm in between. I, I like the trigger one. I consider it a buff, but what you what would you say? I think considering that it's not that hard to get like if you play Howland, you probably have like two to three Kranokman units. Yeah, you're very mobile. It shouldn't yeah. be shouldn't be um, that big of a deal to be to get in long range. Yeah. It's still nice that you have if you really want to avoid this at the opponent, you you can now. That's yeah. good. Yeah, um, and I mean the trigger got easier. You have more possibilities to play it now you cannot say haha I, I don't activate i take the horses and move out of this so um i would consider it um a better card now yeah in my book yeah and it's very, really cool because i'm a, I'm a howland lover um it was one of my most loved commanders back in the days um so yeah it's it's, it's a good change and um, once again like um, they wanted to give a commander focus, and they focused on some commanders here. Small little changes that you really um, have to think about for a while. And um, I would really encourage them to to follow this path um, yeah. even more, because there are more cards that I think should be looked at um, in this manner. Mm, but they're true. Yeah, good change. Good true. Change. Yeah. Shame that didn't change the NCU, but that's a different story. So let's go mm -hmm. to the superior positioning one. Superior positioning is a general change. So each and every superior positioning card was changed. But specifically for the Starks, um, this was a card that made, for me, made uh, Rob Starks three cards. Um, They're quite offensive, like or like, like hit and run style. Um, this one was kind of a defensive card, which you... You know, you played it out, but you never were expecting that to happen, right? I mean, you played it because it's out of your hand, and you were yeah. like, yeah, well, whatever. I, I I, don't look at the die even, right? I, I don't look at it. And sometimes it works, but mostly not. So now with this change, it really does something. Because um, now for Rob Stark's unit, which, it, which is mostly in, like, Bog Devils, Dervishes, something like that, both yeah. units are not eager to get hit, right? So um, I think that rounds the whole commander pretty, pretty good. It it, it gives it gives him a well designed deck, I would say, and uh, I really like the change for the card, specifically for Rob, um, but in but in general also. It's now a better card. Um, it is oddly charged, can really mess your opponent with their opponent game plan. Yes, there are cards. Yeah, it's like 
it, it, this only charges are impactful for sure. And now that you can have this on a five or less, it's, it's really painful. Yeah. Um, and it's good for Rob. I think he didn't need it, but again, it's a general change and um, a change to a card that was definitely one of the weakest cards in the whole game. Yeah. Um, so true. Yeah. Good change. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so and now we want to end this video for all of you to to basically give you like like the tryouts are on, right? We have the all all these all these units are sitting on the bench now, and now we have the tryouts in the gym. And what we want to see in the gym is a, a specific list just for you, uh, which Daniel uh, made up, and uh, there were quite 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 some thinking on it. So I'm uh, give give the floor to Daniel. Yeah, interesting, sneaky 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 list. Um, but uh, Daniel, guide us through it. Yeah, and maybe afterwards we can also talk like a little bit whether now stocks are completely falling out of the meta or what is happening. You know, yeah, let's maybe go. Some yeah. Hot, hot predictions. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this this list is um, kind of exploiting or really leaning into uh, doing one decisive punch that you can deliver, and so that your opponent ends up in a very um, bad situation, really, mm. when, really in a kind of a kind of pickle. He will. Uh, find his, himself in. Um, that's something also like Thomas from the Hits and Quits team, Nachtalp, um likes to do with the Stark Bowman. He was always uh, really voting for the Stark Bowman. So maybe I can explain it a little bit what's what's going on here. Uh, for the units, you have the Talisson Shields. Um, they are, yeah, definition of a command bunker. As I said, it's probably not the most efficient unit, but whatever. You have Howland Reed adding Disrupt to it. So this unit is really now pretty defensive and here's superior flanking to remind you superior flanking works if um, a unit in long range is attacked in the flank you can trigger it and um, the attack will add a vulnerable and um, a panic condition to so that's good you have chrono when bog david um, they are um, a uh, chronic man unit as well as how to read also give the chronic man affiliation and you have scout openings that's where, um, where you bring them for. Now you have your Stark Bowman with Mirror Reed, also Chronic Man Affiliation, and Traps. And you have the Outriders. They um, deliver, um, in this case, uh, the tactical reposition, which is important. And here's what you do now. You have Aya Stark as your NCUs, um, Caitlyn Stark, and Eddard Stark. And I will cover Jack and Hagar a little bit later. But what you basically do, if, um, if you have your tempo turned so that you know that you will uh, begin the next round, you can open the next round, you put your Stark Bowman in a position using Aya's token. You can use both, no problem, and the three inch shift so that you can shoot a unit of your opponent in the flank. And you have like a lot of movement. You have two maneuvers, you have the three inch shift. You also have the two inch shift from your shooting. And you need to get a unit um, in the flank. Then you open with um, scout openings on the unit that you want to attack. It also should be um, possibly in 12 inches of Howland Reed for the superior flanking. Um, you open uh, with scout openings, Eddard Stark on swords, attach Eddard Stark. Just as a reminder, a reminder Eddard Stark says, this unit cannot be um, targeted by tactic zones and um, and see abilities. So this unit is locked there, cannot heal, cannot retreat. Then you shoot with the Stark Bowman. You have seven dice, rerolls, precision, um, vulnerable, panic. So you will do some damage, right? And then the unit sits there. If this unit now wants to do something, it has to activate because it cannot be targeted by tactic zone. If it activates or yeah, does something, then you maybe have your kind of trap card. You have the traps from Mirror Read, right? So there are good chances that the unit might be might be dead anyway, or or I mean, or your opponent has to spend the activation of a unit. To go to go backwards or whatever, then you can claim letters or something. It's still a big win if you if you if you don't have the card or something. Um, and but probably he cannot move. He cannot move because otherwise he will die. Then you have still your Stark Bowman in range or your Stark Outriders that can finish uh, the unit off or whatever. So you really want to deliver a decisive blow um, using all the tools that this list gives you, right? The superior flanking, um, the scout openings, Adart Stark. And now to Jack and Hagar, because if you can, in this manner, kill one unit, Jack and Hagar is very important. It's a very nice tech piece. Um, what he basically says is like a, like a turn code that you put into um, uh, your opponent's unit. And if you kill him, you can um, 
choose any unit on the table and deal three wounds to it. It might be a drowned man, which would be dead. It might be uh, a unit, an infantry unit, um, where you can do three wounds. And the important thing is like one of these wounds can be the attachment. So you can simply snap a commander. If you ever um, experience this, you will be, will be um, very careful where to go with this unit where yeah. Jacken is in. Yeah. And so it's a very nice unit with subtle little things that your opponent has to has to be aware of. And I think um, you could really try this out and it brings a lot of the things together. It also shows that traps are still viable and so on and so on. Should be a fun list. Um, and we would really love to, to hear um, what your experiences are. With it. Definitely. Yeah, really sneaky list. And when I first saw it, I wasn't really aware what's happening, especially with the um, superior flanking, right? Mm -hmm. That you also deal um, tokens off of it. And to be honest, like the Stark Woman will probably deal a weaken on their own, also, also yeah. right? Yeah. So, so this unit is pretty, pretty messed up sitting there in this uh, position. So, uh, yeah, it's a really cool list, uh, definitely to try it out. Um, and, and also, one thing uh, to to, yep. to add to this because I, I forgot it. Um, you could also use Sansa instead of Caitlyn to really make use of the cards. And we all, we, we only talked about kind of traps, but let's not forget, like. Um, when the unit activates, it's also the trigger for Buck Devil Ambush, which yeah. then would allow you another attack with your Stark Bowman because they are kind of a unit which is in long range, right? And so, they can attack. Um, yeah. yeah, or even Threat Unseen that you could um, put on top of it, which yeah. allows for another panic test. So um, I think this might be might be um, definitely something to try out and to have fun with. Yeah. All right, so um, that brings us to the end of the video and the discussion on the Stark, like our final thoughts on Starks. Um, I think all the changes were good, needed, does not break the faction. It does, or, or it does the push the faction to any, to any extent. It just gives some more nice options to list building, I think, especially through the Sworn Shields, but it also makes the deck a little better or the the specific commander decks a little more usable so they probably stay where they are in my book what do you think um yeah they are nearly or barely um unchanged for me yeah. um to be honest and so i think to if we want to predict where stocks end up in the meta um or on our tier list or whatever mm. then we probably have to observe what happened to the environment there they are playing in um, yeah. more than looking at the faction because the faction can still do everything that it's um, uh, that it's known for and what makes it good in the competitive uh, play. Yeah. All right. So that rounds it up for the Starks, and you mm -hmm. will see the series continuing. We will have Daniel with with us. You will all you will also see Randall. Um, so we will cover one faction one by one uh, to give you all the insights on each or your main faction probably um so yeah looking forward to this one and uh until we meet again roll those crits guys come for the hits and stay for the crits